gentlemen. Fire. Hello. We're live. Hello and welcome to the Reservist uh, podcast episode 5 where Navy talks. My name is Lieutenant Holbert and I'll be your host for today. I'm joined by my good friends and colleagues Lieutenant Hooch, Lieutenant Junior Monty, Petty Officer Oakley and Rear Admiral Moose. <laughs> Part one, this uh, this week's news. Uh, 2.2 is finally live for everyone to download. Uh, this includes the new physicalized EVA, uh, the Sabre flyable in the verse, and the Xi'an Kartu all in hangar. Uh, this also means the CIG are going to be working on 2.3 in the near future, which is very exciting because we've heard a lot of rumors about what's going to be in there. And uh, our very own Admiral Hawk recently went to visit the Foundry 42 team in Manchester and has asked the questions that you wanted answers to. Uh, you can expect Admiral Hawk to be making a post about it very soon with lots of other little details in it too. So, this week's shenanigans, what have we all been up to? Everybody, how are we? And what the fuck have we been doing? <laughs> Work. Work. Work, yeah. Work yeah. sounds good. Except for cool. Work. <laughs> so, because <Yeah>. I am <sighs> young. <laughs> Only you old fuckers. <laughs> I am. Um, well, yeah, you'll catch up. Don't worry. You will catch up <laughs> on you one day. Catching up to do. I don't, that's not how age works. I don't think. Yeah, I've gained one year on you. <laughs> yeah, because 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 I ain't going no fucking further. Yeah, <laughs> Hooch has now decided he will no That's longer it. age from this time. I've had enough. Yeah, twenty 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 five is enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you love a very me. healthy twenty five. Yeah. I look even... fucking fantastic for twenty five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look a day over twenty. Um... Yeah, you, can, you can throw that link into the into the Twitter if you want. What link, sorry, mate? In the, uh, put it in the Skype chat. So oh, I yeah. have been working on the scenes for the complimation of the scenes that we've been sort of filming while we've been in an arena commander. And I put together a delightful bloopers clip for scene number three of the video that we've been working on. For any of you who have not seen it, I recommend you look at it. It's pretty good. Um, other than that, been uh, collecting audio snippets from each of those those wonderful people you see in there and then clipping them all together to kind of make it bring the scenes to life a little bit more than they were before nice nice so moose has been busy this week um yeah he's been doing a lot with uh, all of our videos this week um as you know we're actually currently still filming a advert at the current moment to um to promote our uh, our organization i'm just about to put the link to the video in twitch chat there so everyone enjoy that, watch it, it's great. Um, so Moose has been working really, really hard. Um, a lot of the people you see in chat have been working on it, as well as a few others. We'll make sure to um, give thanks to them very, very shortly. Um, Rory, I'd ask what you've done this week, but um, I think we've got a good idea what you've been doing. Um, getting very angry with uh, you, Curtis, and Harris on one of the warships. Yeah, <laughs> that's been our week. <laughs> it's, it's been very very salty this week yeah. the um, salt mines of, of Rory never run out well it is actually a bottomless pit but... <laughs> I feel like some nights you kind of just you've got your spoon on the edge of the pit and some nights you're just fucking jumping in the pit you just <laughs> you forget in the spoon the salt. and just straight in it straight pure in the salt. salt pure salt I'm the first salt based life form <laughs> 70% salt. Yeah. Chris, what have you been doing this week? Oh! Um, <laughs> working. No, no, we met working. the other Chris. Well, I don't Chris. Know, there's lots of... There's, Chris, there's lots what have of... you been doing this week? All, there, all right, lo- fuck all. It's been doing nothing. There, all right. Look, look, there's lots of voices in my head, and I don't know which one he's talking to right now, so... No, uh, mostly working, and then working, then a little bit more working, but um, 
besides that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Boring this week. Mm. And Oakley, what have you been doing this week? Well, like like Rory said, I've I've been on World of Warships for a fair amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I did I did manage to get a promotion, which was which is pretty nice. I was pretty pleased with that. Nice uh, up to petty officer like that. Good man. And 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 other than that, not not much really. I just you know going to school, same shit, different day. Good I man. heard you got a new dad. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. and I'm very happy. Yep. Our internet speed is gonna go through the roof. Yep. Yep. Was it? Would, I, would my father like to introduce himself? Hello, I am uh, Oakley's new dad. <laughs> um. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. It's a long story. It's a very long story. <laughs> <laughs> it's not though. You just declared one night that you were now my father. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's how it begun. Ended. No, but yeah. no, you know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Entire ordeal summarized with the pictures I'm putting up of Ainsley Harriet. I'm pretty sure there's an Ainsley picture for every situation in the universe, though. There is there is a good yeah. amount of Ainsley pictures out there. For, um, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on to the topic of the week this week, which is obviously 2.2, uh, which is obviously the most pressing um, of all matters in terms of uh, the entirety of CIG News. Um, as I mentioned in this week's news, uh, 2.2 has now been released to live, which is awesome, and there are so many changes to this thing. Um it's unreal. It's it's great. I um, we had a we had a little burst on it earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, I was I was I was impressed. You know, had a had a, a went into arena commander, messed around with my saber. While I like it, I I think it is going to get the uh, nerf hammer at some point, probably. Oh yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's going to stay the way it is. Um, it's nice. It's pretty cool, you know, but I just don't see it. Um, then we, uh, we we actually went on a, a quite a long rampage in your retaliator. Yes, they finally fixed the, the collision. And I, and I yes. didn't fall through the floor once. You didn't fall through the floor once. Although like um, every time I freaking get into the thing, it's straight through the damn I, floor. Although I tell you what, the the bedrooms are more fucking dangerous than the retaliators now. My head got stuck in one of the rooms. That's just your personal preference, I think. That was <laughs> just it's a normal Saturday night. That is. Um, I, I like I like having my com- my combustion pistol. Yes, the yeah, yeah. the ballistic arms are in, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the uh, and the new laser rifle, which is oh, it's so cool. It's yeah. so cool. Um, I love it. The the new uh, system for uh, reputation and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's 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 pretty good. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm I, I like that. You now know who who's who's who kind of thing, and you can kind of guesstimate whether they're going to shoot on you or not a little bit better. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, it, we had a good little time on there. Uh, they still haven't fixed. The back seat in the Hornet, Super Hornet. No, no. You can't get out of the damn thing, and that messes you up until you do a proper, you know. Yeah. You basically have to destruct yourself. You have to self-destruct and and blow yourself up, which isn't particularly nice when when you're trying to go for an. In- oh, for goodness sake, when you're trying to go for a completely non-death. Not death run. <laughs> Welcome to the Reservist Podcast for all of those who have just joined us. Um, we are a very mature <laughs> show. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, two point two. Um, 
I think it's about a 20, 27 to 26 gig download, uh, depending obviously on your internet. It will it will vary. And you got in there yet, Moose? Moose is dead. Um, I just had to reactivate my mic. <clears throat> and right. the answer is no, because as soon as I left, it was going to be done by the time I returned, and something hiccuped, and it paused the download, so it's still in progress. All right. Hmm. Mm. Um, See, sorry, go ahead. I don't yeah, have I was thinking, thinking what else? What else did we notice in there? You know, a lot, a lot of people using sabers. Not surprising. Yeah, but then I expected that because when the Vanguard was released, that was all people were using as well. Yeah. So it's just getting to grips with the new ship and just having a play around with it. Because to be honest, if if you've ordered a saber and it's now flight ready, you're not you're not gonna fly a freaking Aurora. So, it's a pretty sexy ship as well. I'm not going to lie, it is sure. a sexy ship. Ridiculous, ridiculous how, quite how fast it got into the uh, flight ready stage. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was very quick. Um, one of the things that they've obviously said is that the timeline and the way that they're making ships now is so much faster than what it used to be. So they're getting ships like the Sabre uh, concepted and modeled and gray box and all this kind of thing and then uh put into game within you know a couple of months well, there's there is one ship from the original kickstarter campaign I'd, I'd really like to see what's that mm. take a while to guess redeemer <laughs> yeah that's it the Rede no um it, you want to see that flight ready Actually, yes, I do, because then I'll have the ability to blow it up. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, yeah. what I can do is complain about it at the moment, but when it's actually flight, yeah, <laughs> when the war fun begins. But uh, no, the address, yeah, um, we we yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, hopefully, that won't be too long. Um, but I do. My personal opinion is that uh, the address will become perhaps maybe flight ready, or even just a kind of hangar thing. Just before Squadron Forty Two is released, or maybe just as Squadron no, Forty Two is released. You know, I actually kind of hope they do. What I'm kind of hoping they're doing is they're gonna have one just on one of the patches docked up to Olizar. Hmm. Can't move it or anything. Not active, but you can go around and run around it as like a first-person level or something. Hmm. It's big enough. The scrubby going onto my address. My... No, no, know. I'm not talking about personally yours. I'm just talking about a model of it. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll get really possessive. I'll but then stalking around its machine gun. I guess. I guess the uh, the point of that then is that I I I maybe personally wouldn't if I was in Chris Roberts' shoes. So that then. When you do finally play Squadron 42 for the first time, the Idris is this marvellous thing that you've never seen before, you know, so it's, it's that excitement of going on to something new. Um, but that's that's just what I do in his shoes, but then I'm an asshole, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, are. I mean, no, of course not. <laughs> you shouldn't say that about yourself. No, unless you're not. That's uh, my profile. So, um, yeah, 2.3 is will be coming out next, and that has Starfare. been... Starfarer. Starfarer. Which is interesting, because uh, that's all we're all going to be talking about the Starfarer a bit later. Ooh. If I you'd... think it'll be hangar ready. Oh, yes. That's going to be a big fucking ship. That's, uh, that's going to be the biggest one, isn't it, that they've released so far. Exciting! Yes, it will be, yes. Exciting. Oh, exciting stuff and I had I had one as well. <laughs> I like used to have it. one as well. Silly, silly man. It's the first silly. ship I ever got in the game. Starfire Gemini. Yeah, we'll be talking about that later. So more information on that later. Um But yeah. Uh two point two is actually really, really good. I enjoy it. There is there are a few bugs and a few things wrong with it, which is kind of funny, because I would almost say two point two is a little bit more stable. In terms of some of the bugs that we have now, it almost seems as if new bugs have been introduced, but 
as I said, new physicalized EVA, I love it. The new EVA is so good. Um, cover system they've obviously implemented, so good. The new laser rifle is sexy as hell. Um, Turrets are now working a lot better. Mm-hmm. Turrets working a lot better. Um, a, little bit, a little bit on the uh, oversensitive side, I think, mm -hmm. but a lot better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the retaliator, you don't fall through anymore, which is lovely. Yeah. And, and in terms of actual missiles and rockets, I think they fixed it, but the retaliator torpedoes seem to still not work. They don't explode inside the retaliator anymore, but they kind of launch and then just dissipate. So uh, I don't know what's going on there, but they probably just haven't. They're having trouble with that at the moment. Um... But yeah, uh, Hooch also earlier also managed to get back inside the retaliator through one of the airlocks, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The airlocks all work. Um, yeah, it, it, it seems like it's getting there now. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm quite liking the new uh, EVA stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, just um, the... How do you think they're going to... Sorry, go ahead. Go, go for it, Sorry, that's an important thing. No, 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 go, go for it, please. Do so. Oh, okay. Um, um, how, how did you... <laughs> just cry. I'm just gonna, just gonna go. Shut yeah. up, Harrison. <laughs> no, Harrison, please. Yeah, say something. No, you know. please, Harrison. Okay, okay. okay. How, do you, how do you think they're gonna run the whole getting into a ship? Are they gonna keep it the way it is now and make it so that other people can get in with you? No. When you don't want them to, or do you reckon like they're going to have like a key system like within the Moby Glass to say, Chips. open, close, mm. and then you can only you can open it. So or yeah, so, mm -hmm. so that then you have to open it from the inside. Will have to... Yeah, it's it's got to have it's got to have some sort of form of locking, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Chris yeah, Roberts has said that um, people in your party will be able to enter and exit your ship. Um, without permission and stuff like that. But um, people who do want to enter your ship and are not part of your party or in your friends list will have to rec uh, request permission. And that's why there's these breaching tools and stuff. The uh, the paw, it's called. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. Ted has put up an amazing video on that. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you go watch it because it's fucking cool. It's like a laser beam, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I one thing you, you can tell where they're going with this is in the Retaliator you have a little panel that says closed doors or open hatches and stuff like that. And it seems as though you can lock hatches, lock doors, that kind of thing. Um, to, I, think, I guess it's just more important in terms of multi-crew ships, really, uh, anything. So you're just not going to have people come on board whenever the hell they like, really. Well, I, um, I, I, think, I think up to an extent. Um, if you have something with a boarding ramp or whatever, and it's open people are still going to be able to get in. You're not going to be able to stop that. No, oh, yeah, obviously. But that's you then know? that then that's your own incompetence. But they're not going to really. be able to open that ramp. No. No, they're not. Um, but then again, that's that's where you just... Obviously, in the future, we're going to have VoIP. That's when we just say, get off the ramp, or I'll shoot you. That kind of thing, really. Um, so, you know, in a VoIP um, is something that we should be looking forward to as well. I don't know when that's going to be implemented because we haven't had any kind of information on that, but that's going to be a real game changer, I think. But um, It'd make life so much easier, though, wouldn't it? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. What was that, Rory? Aside from some hardcore, from some hardcore role players, I don't really think people are going to use it. It'll be there, and you'll come across one weirdo that uses it, and everyone else will either decide I don't really like talking to other people or I hate everybody else so fuck them, I'm not talking to them. Yeah, but I think the point is with VoIP is not so much the um, the talking to friends, it's so much the talking to randoms who are going to come up to you and uh, maybe give you a job or want to discuss things with you, that kind of thing. Um, I don't think it's much along the lines of something like Call of Duty, you say, where you can just play a game without VoIP ever. Um, I think Star Citizen's a bit different just because of the fact that you've got the planetary modules and just the general kind of, uh, you know, the uh, action and relativity between two players. So, um, I don't know. I suspect 
people will just keep on using the text chat. Not when yeah. you can just press a button and talk to someone. It's going to be a lot easier, isn't it? But I know for certain that I'm going to use VoIP because it sounds awesome. Mm. Um, but yeah, Moose, um, what are you looking forward to most in 2.2? Or getting your hands on or testing the most? Probably the saber. Yeah. Mm. So that was and, a sexy and the EVA stuff should be pretty cool too. Mm. Mm. EVA is great. EVA is, is really great. And if uh, if you downloaded it by the end of this podcast, we'll go and have a little play around. Um, also, yeah, this is one thing I forgot to mention about 2.2 as well. 24 players... Yes. And they finally sorted out the party system as well. Yes. Yes, they finally sorted it out. So joining Thank Christ. Yeah, so joining games with your friends is so much easier because if you're in a party, the matchmaking system will realize how many people you need and it will put you into a server with enough spaces for your friends to join. And it seems that that conjoined with the new 24 Max players has has made it so much easier. It's you it can really literally is. you. Whereas before it used to take sometimes twenty minutes to get into a game, you can now pretty much get on almost instantly. So it's it's brilliant. It's great. Um, and you know, <laughs> oh god, Harrison's picture just froze in a really weird way. There, <laughs> mm, I have a really long neck. <laughs> <laughs> um. I sit up straight up like a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's all sorted out finally, so it's all great. Um, so much better. Um, so yeah, I mean, what what are you looking forward to the most, uh, Rory? In uh, in terms of two point two. Um. I mean, I, I don't really own either of the two new big ships mm. coming into the update. Um, yeah, I suppose it'll be fairly pleasant, as you've said before, not having to wait half my lifetime to actually get into the server. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the main thing. Yeah, I mean, the part... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, waiting times are, have been reduced by by just a huge amount, so it's 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 brilliant. It really is great. Um, Hooch, we've played two point two, so I don't need to ask you. Harrison, what are you looking forward to the most on two point two? Well, I think it's gonna sound really sad, but the ease of joining is just gonna no, that's, yeah, be so much fun. I just gonna I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna come on of an evening and just join and unjoin with you lot and be like oh thank you thank you so much as soon as you unjoin the game will crash though it still does yeah. that it doesn't like you exit it it has to crash <sighs> fucking game oh, yeah. i don't know why this it does still... that as well it's fucking bastard yes, i'd game. like to exit the game well i feel dishonored by your leaving so i'm going to get shepaker <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you can't make him up, can you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, the two point two is great. If you haven't downloaded it already, I would very much suggest you go do that. Um, and a or, or you could just not play anything. Yeah. You really don't have a choice if you want to play anything right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, what games are out that well, that I've just well, well I mean, Star Citizen wise. Oh uh, god, yeah. XCOM two. I mean, that's obviously the big poster child. XCOM two is pretty good. Yeah, XCOM two is actually really good fun. Um, I tell you, one other thing I bought as well this month is uh, Far Cry Primal, and that's actually pretty good. Um, I I've haven't really been interested it's... in Far Cry before. I mean, do you know that game so much better when you get the laser rifle? <laughs> <laughs> A friggin' oh. saber tooth with lasers, yeah. Yeah, with CB Pro PC Gamer. Yeah, frickin' laser beams. Um, lasers. Yeah, um, but Fire Cry Prime was pretty good. Um, I quite enjoy that. I, I wasn't really interested in 3 or 4, but for some reason this one really interests me. Because you could fucking ride bears. So. Why didn't you get Ark Survival? Or Rust? That's a good point. 
I should have Ark Survival, yeah. And also, um, apparently they've literally just changed the terrain and yeah. very slight trees. Things. Yeah, they didn't, so, they didn't. Literally nothing is different from Far Cry 4. They did an ultimate scumbag. But then again, it is Ubisoft, so what do you kind of expect, really? Um, yeah, so Far Cry Prime is pretty good. Um, I've also played XCOM 2. I, I quite enjoy that a lot. But I think I'm the game I'm playing at the moment, I'm probably going to lose. I think I've got to the point now where I've let the advent thing happen too much. But, um, yeah, I'm probably going to lose. Yeah. Have you played, uh, uh, what should we call it? Um... Fucking hell, I thought you just mentioned it then. Um, the thing with the dinosaurs... And... Ark Survival. Um, yeah. I haven't played Ark Survival, but that is one thing I'd quite like to play, because it looks... Like you should, really? because me and Ruri both have it, and so we can have some serious salty banter. I Ruri that? and I. You know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that sounds like a really good book, actually. Well, not a really good book. Sort of like, like with Nail and I. Yeah, it's, it wouldn't be a good book. It would just be a book that you could read. Rory and I. I think that's the purpose of a book, Curtis. Yeah, but it wouldn't be something you'd go, oh, I'm going to read Rory and I today. It's going to be, it's like one of those English literature books which you're forced to read and you just hate it. I don't know. You can use some books to prop, prop up a table, you know. I could spread my saltiness across the entire population. <laughs> God. I'm, I'm, this is like, starting to sound almost pornographic now. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your saltiness to yourself there, buddy. Nah. <laughs> In fairness, I have another use of books. Seeming intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have an entire fucking <laughs> library behind you. Gigadobs. <laughs> Gigadobs. Uh, Gigadobs. Um, yes. Um... Is there any particular news anyone wants to talk about this week, which is of any importance to them? Moose. I might be getting fucking eye fiber optic. Hooray! Yay! So Rory's actually going to get reasonable internet, maybe. 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 I will accept maybe. Now all we need to do is get Harrison to have reasonable internet. And everything will be ha, okay. Harrison, I might get better internet than you. <laughs> I've already had a promotion. True. True. You, you do know you Still went from ranking. ensign to petty officer, right? Shh, shh, we don't need to hear that. That's, that's beside the point. Oh, okay. I already know, Harrison. <laughs> um, talking of promotions, actually, um, anyone, uh, if anyone who has worked on the video um, that Moose is actually producing at the moment, could you possibly give me a little message just to say what it is um, you've done when you did it? Because I've got a good um, amount of knowledge about what people have... Who? Oh, God, words. I have a good amount of knowledge about who was there and what you did, but um, if you could just confirm that for me, that would be great um, because I'm going to be messaging Hawk soon for the next round of promotions. So that's pretty cool. Um, would, you, yeah. would it be cheeky if I messaged you? <laughs> no, not at all, no. Um, no, literally, um, if anyone who is watching this um, was involved in any of the video making for the advert, please give me a message. I, I'm on Facebook pretty much all the time. So if you need to message me, I'm on there. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Hooch, do you have any information you would like to talk about? Hmm. Not right now, nothing's coming to mind. Uh, just, yeah, pretty much what we've talked about. Yeah, okay, and Oakley. Well, I got a promotion. <laughs> Harrison got a promotion, everyone. I got a promotion. Serious question. Yes. What's the like sign now? Because Ensign was E N. What's what's the petty officer sign? P O. P O. Like your, it. Your Poo Oakley. That is me. Well it's not Poo, it's just Po. So he's like a Teletubby then. Yeah. Teletubby like Oakley. Brilliant. Anyway, uh let's uh, move on to the next topic, which is the ship of the week. 
This uh, ship of the week is the Starfarer Gemini, as recommended by Board Gamer, who was on last week. Um, woo, Board Gamer! Um, of course, uh, ship of the week uh, relies on using information and stats taken from the um, from the stats page on the Robert Space Industries uh, page, and obviously take everything I say with a massive pinch oh, of salt. It's because it's utterly true. It's one hundred percent factual, and if you hear it, read, hear it or read a single one of these things, and it doesn't turn out to be true, it is written in fucking Blame. stone. Everyone, yeah. everything I talk say talk. is one hundred percent. Don't ever question it. Just I expect, I expect well, ten concern thread forum. Well, any 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 salt that you're using to get the pinch of salt, we know where you got that from. Uh, I just use I use Monty Salt Mines. Mm -hmm. TM. Um, quality pure salt. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, take everything I say with a pinch of salt because not everything is 100% accurate and is subject to change. So, um, let's start off. Bullshit the... trademark. Bullshit trademark. Um, the Starfarer Gemini. Or um, the Star G. Or the Star G unit. Um is a what is it an absolute beast it's a combat it's a star it's the adopted. it's the military it's version of the starfarer it's the military it's version of the starfarer yeah. um it has increased armor better weapons uh it's less fucking, cargo less cargo fucking huge it's bloody massive um, and it's probably going to be one of the biggest things that is that is going to be added to our hangar. Uh, excuse me, sorry, I burped. It's going to be one of the biggest things uh, that we've seen in the hangar and in the game so far. So do enjoy it. It's going to be freaking huge. Uh, on its stats page, the uh, primary engines, we have a tier 4 or TR4 engines. We have three TR4 engines. Uh, maneuvering thrusters are TR3. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have ten... No, we have 14 maneuvering TR3 uh, thrusters. The power plant is a size 7. Uh, the unmanned turrets, we have two size 5 unmanned turrets, uh, three, uh, two size 4 manned turrets, and one size 5. And the shields, we have two size 4s. Can I just interject? Yes. Uh, did you ever watch Art Attack when you were sort of 5 or 6? Yeah, I did, yeah. Remember when they used to show the things off? They'd have that music that goes. Ah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I that do. Music needs to play when you're reading those off. If someone needs to get on that and someone needs to do that, that would be great. Well, someone with good internet, preferably, please. <laughs> Shotgun, not. <laughs> if someone was to do that now, I I could read all through this again, and it would just give it the charm it really needs. Some of these doing it. Okay, I'm just gonna wait here for a minute. Oh, I'm, I'm messaging Hawk. Sorry. Oh, okay. Hoochie's doing it. I can see Hoochie's eyes. Hoochie's doing it. Okay, this is gonna be great. Okay. You can you can tell because he looks from from his far his from from his center screen to his right screen and then back to his far left screen. I I, I hope this plays through the podcast. Because I know OBS can be a bit weird with that. No, it wasn't Art Attack. It was the one on BBC. Tony Hart. I swear it was Art Attack. Or was yeah, it Art Smart? Was it Smart? Or was it a Blue Peter? No, it wasn't Blue Peter. Shut up, Harrison. Yeah, but... Not Blue Peter was amazing. Paper mache volcano. Hmm. <sighs> You're too old... Oh, you're too young for this, Harrison. Yeah. Bollocks, I'm a year younger than you, you dipshit. <laughs> Is, uh... Oh, tit. No, no. But this is a... This is a really ravaging podcast, everyone. If, oh, you're, I... if you're liking this, remember to follow my Twitch channel and also <laughs> like and subscribe <laughs> to the UANR. This... <laughs> Um, also, shameless, shameless plug, if you would like to join the UENR, 
um, please head over to our organization um, organization website. I'll okay. Quickly... Oh. Uh, all right. I'm just putting a link to it if you want to have a look. Okay. This is. But that's the actual track. Here now. we go. Okay. Is everyone ready? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. The Starfarer Gemini. It has... No, it's alright, you won't hear it. It will come through on the, the stream soon. <clears throat> the Starfarer Gemini has three TR4 primary engines. It has 14 <laughs> TR3 maneuvering thrusters. A size 7 power plant. It has two size 5 unmanned turrets. Two size four man turrets and a size five. It has two size four shields. <laughs> and it's the military version of the Starfarer. Oh, this is beautiful. I can leave this on all day. This is great. Okay, so, um,. I'm leaving it on. I don't care. Um, <laughs> the Starfarer, what do we all think about this ship then? I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah? I think that uh, we're, they're, they're going to be handy when you need fuel. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. No, honestly, the Starfarer Gemini is going to be a freaking awesome ship, man. I can't wait to see it, even if it's just in the hangar in 2.3. I think it's going to be insane. Do you know, the only problem is with this music as I'm hearing it, right? Is I'm thinking about when, because they used to play the music when they were showing kids art. Yeah. And some of them were like, you're looking at them thinking... Okay. Yeah, These are really bad. In this <laughs> kid just phoned this in. He's just taking a crayon and going, ah! Like that, and they put it in. So I like how they used to describe it. It's like, this is Mark. He's sent in a giraffe. That's not a fucking giraffe, love. That looks nothing <laughs> like a fucking giraffe, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was uh, all high quality British artwork. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh wow, he's got a Norwich mug. Um, oh god. If you too are looking for spaceships, beautiful, beautiful spaceships, then you should head down to Monty's Use Spaceships. Mm -hmm. Good this, deals. This is fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Put that music on again, Monty. Put it on again. Oh, we've got it, fine. Okay. Alright. Now sell us. Sell us your ships, Monty. Really sell it to us. Currently, if you make a direct purchase offer, we can offer a £10 discount. If you, oh, I'll tell uh, you, his salesman's voice, it's like butter, isn't it? It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. love we it. can even it. offer add-ons like pistols and coats. We're gonna oh, whore please. him out to the logistics division. Oh, just hell yeah. He can sell yeah. the second lamp that he Damn, has. Damn, I am gonna pimp you that. out. That was, that was beautiful, Monty. That was he, so well he done. He could sell me. Yeah. People would buy me. He could sell Harrison, and who would want to fucking buy I Harrison? Mean, my parents have been trying to sell me for 16 years. Uh, <laughs> I'm only 17. They wanted me at a very young age, and then it just stopped. Well, who knew that a combination of Elevator jazz music and my sensual voice was so persuasive. <laughs> um, yes, before you doubt me, that is quite literally what I got when I typed in elevator jazz. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um... Here's a link to with Joyce and Jazz in the background while you're producing. Um, Moose. Uh, what do you know about the Starfarer Gemini, and what do you think it will be used for in the verse? Well, sure. That's something that, uh... 
Well, I'm sure it's not going to be used for anything other than uh, its intended purpose. Mm. Challenge accepted. Let <laughs> 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 me do fucking maneuvers and racing in the star. Oh my god, racing in the star Pharaoh Gemini. That it's needs to be a thing. Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. it's probably... It'll be one of those fleet. It'll be a fleet killer. I will win the whole hurry no, race with the star. You right. load it with Sorry. everything. You'll load it with with uh, nuclear, you know, holds, and then drive it out in the middle of the enemy and detonate. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> That's a Monty tactic. That is. <laughs> that is a one hundred percent Monty oh. tactic. Except instead of instead of fuel in its in its cargo hold, it'll be complete salt. Yeah, but it'll be <laughs> so much salt. It'll be flammable salt. Salt and babies. Of course. Uh huh. That's. <laughs> That escalated quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm listening to this music. It's it's <laughs> It's really getting to me. It never ends, Harrison. <laughs> it never ends. Um so I mean the actual stir uh stir fry, I was about to say stir fry then. You hungry? <laughs> I had a sandwich before this, I shouldn't be hungry. A sandwich is gonna do no good if you want a stir fry. It was a chicken mayo sandwich though, so this was a pretty decent sandwich. Um, was it white or brown bread? Oh, it was homo bread. Oh, you fucking disgust me. Hey, it, it's healthy. It had seeds in I don't it and everything. Care. Shut it up. Was, yeah, that's nice. It was healthy. <laughs> okay, so the Starfarer is. Um, is a transport ship. They're just normal um, Starfarer, and um, this, oh, I'm gonna turn this fucking music off. Right there, you go. Uh, the star, the Starfarer differs. Uh, it says here in the description that the uh, Starfarer differs from the traditional freighters in one key way. It is a something fuel platform because this thing just won't load. Okay, here it goes. <coughs> is a dedicated fuel platform. The Starfarer is designed not only to load, store, and protect fuel status units, it is designed to take in space-borne hydrogen and then refine it for use without uh, uh, without landing. That's perfect. That means it's a great ship for fleets. And this is a military version, so it's going to be able to hold its own as well. To me, it makes me think of... Um... Uh, a KC-135, KC-10, mm -hmm. VC-10, you know, a modern a modern refueling aircraft just for space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there was, there's a, there's a thing. Rory, turn it I, down. I, I heard, uh... <coughs> Rory. Thank you. If I can find <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Go, go ahead, um, Harrison. Um, the start, the, the the normal Starfarer I heard was um, that big front pylon thing you've got right on the front of your ship, is is what collects the hydrogen when you go in. Mm -hmm. And the thing with the Starfarer Gemini is that it doesn't have that because you swap it out for a a very very granted a very large batch of missiles, mm -hmm. but you don't have that. So you can it will function the same if you buy the the other module and then trade it off but you will have to collect i think it would work really well because you'll go out with the normal starfarer thing with that module on the front yeah you're going to collect all your hydrogen you need you'll be refining it because bearing in mind that it is it is just an awesome ship so it refines everything you need yeah and then you'll head back you'll park up you'll swap it over and then you'll have full tankers Ready for ready for distribution amongst your fleet, and you'll be flying around trying to refuel people, but you can also be on the battlefield at the same time. And that's the beauty of it, I think, is that it's actually all interchangeable, which mm. is going to be insane. Mm. I don't know if you'd have it actually on the battlefield as much as off the side of the battlefield. You okay. probably wouldn't want to put this in the middle of a battlefield, um, but it would be excellent to have for extending the range of operations because uh, the way I'm seeing things right now, a lot of the fighters aren't going to have the, that tremendous of a range. They're not going to be jumping 
two or three, you know, systems away to go on an operation, not without something to extend that range. The way I see it is it's basically like a naval auxiliary ship. So it's basically the... Log well, it is logistics, isn't it? Um, so I'll tell you what, our logistics corp are going to freaking love 2.3 if the Starfair is in it. Um, it's... If, if, if it is going to be in 2.3, a flyball at least, then this, this means that it's also... The game's mm -hmm. also going to have to have hydrogen places to refine fuel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And maybe then they might actually even add... Add fuel in, but yeah. Sorry, as I, as I was saying before, um, the way I see this ship is very much uh, the way I see this ship is it's very much a um, a naval auxiliary ship. So it's there to provide support, but not be on the front lines. So refueling that kind of thing, um, and yeah, as you said, it will be able to keep operations going for a much larger <coughs> an extended period of time, um, which would be great. So um, yeah. Uh, what what is your opinion on it, uh, Monty? What do you think about the staff? Well, indeed, dig it up. <laughs> um, I honestly don't think there'll be anything other than hangar ready. <laughs> so, two point seven also. <laughs> Stop it, Curtis! You're making me go. <laughs> dig it up. <laughs> I thought it was a grandmaster. Well, indeed, they're not <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I'm done for the evening already. Uh, that was the Reservers podcast. Goodbye. Um, no. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, Harrison, we asked you about your opinion. I'm, I'm lost. No. Well, I think I gave mine anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you can skip me. Go, I probably wasn't even paying attention. I'm sorry. Um, Moose, have we asked you your opinion? Moose is dead. Um, have we asked <laughs> your opinion on the stuff for Jim and I? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Moose. I'm so sorry. Okay, um, <laughs> would you like to give your opinion on the stuff for Jim and I? Even though Curtis isn't going to concentrate. I, I, I can't anymore. This, I can't. <laughs> Moose? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So what is your opinion of the Starfarer then? I think it's a good ship. Wow. <laughs> It's hard to give an evaluation on a ship that you haven't flown or seen the inside of, so... <laughs> Anything I say to you would have to be taken with Rory's grain of salt. Yeah. Supplied for by Rory, apparently. Um... Uh... Oh, bloody hell. I did have a load of questions lined up for this. Yes! <laughs> that is it. I figured out. How do you think it will be useful to the UEENR? That for me? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, no, you take it, Moose. Okay. So it will be strategic in every aspect from refueling uh, the capital ships, refueling the fleets, transporting around cargo, transporting around food, water, anything else that might be needed. Uh, that is in mass volumes that, are, that it's required in. Other than that, it will be a very big target, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's. Um, I think the bigger ships are definitely going to have the bigger targets on them. And seeing as it is a, f a fueler, it's gonna it's gonna be an even bigger target just because of the um, the car the cargo it has on board and just. You know, I mean, yeah. I guess fuel is going to be a, a reasonably um, finite resource. Um, well, an almost infinite resource, I guess. But it depends what kind of um, quality of fuel you have, really. So, um, yeah. Um, anyone else? Do do we know how this would be useful for you, ENR? Anyone? Anyone? Harrison? Harrison? <laughs> yeah. Well, um... I was just, I was just having a, a wee thought. Um, 
What happens when you are quite out in space and you're using your starfarers to collect fuel on the go as well? You've, you've planned a whole route around this, mm -hmm. going from system to system, collecting hydrogen on your way, right? Try and do exploration or moving into Vandal territory. Yep. And you've got a large fleet. Would it not be beneficial for the Vandal or the enemy, whoever they may be, to simply hit and run and just throw everything they've got at those, what, four to five gem starfarers we're going to have? Most of them not being the Gemini anyway, because mm -hmm. they need to collect the fuel. Um, would, that not, would that not pose a huge target due to the fact that all of a sudden, if the, <laughs> if the starfarers go down... You are stranded in the vastness of space <laughs> with no fuel, with literally limited um, fuel. The, the answer to your question is no, there is absolutely no threat. And the reason is because we have Rory and his Idris. <laughs> <laughs> with his giant eye wind bundle. Yeah. Rory will literally load will. into the verse and everyone will die. <laughs> and uh, they will never yeah. be able to get ships ever again and we've won. Okay, uh, I have to say, you know, <laughs> you you would never have all of your Gemini's in one place, and you should never have them anywhere obvious. Basically, oh. you're gonna hide them out. Mm. You know, it's it's as simple as that. You would only have certain people know where they are, and that would be, um, if if somebody needed refueling or something, command would coordinate between you and the Star Affair. To meet up somewhere, so you would never know the location yourself of where they're hiding. Out. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's 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 a fair shout because um. Holy but, shit! I'm huge. Yes, uh, you are. What's going with the channel, dude? Yeah. Holy shit! Eh? Oh, I want to have a look now. Oh, there you yeah, go. Come on, come on, I come wonder on. how long we've been it's like this. It's just flicked over to that. Oh, there you go. I must have sorted it out. It must have been a button I pressed or something. There you go. I don't know why it's got that red thing in the corner, though. That's weird. Hmm. I have to wait until I upload it to YouTube before I do it. Why, why is... What is this? Self-destruct activated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, right. Okay, well, I'm gonna... I'm gonna get rid of that. Mm. There you go. That's better. Okay. Um... <laughs> Next, uh, next question. Uh, sorry, no, actually. Monty, how will this be useful to the UENR? How would it be? Um, it would be really hel helpful if I'm not left fucked in the middle of nowhere with no fuel. Well, I guess that pretty much covers the fact that, you know, um, fleets and stuff. I mean, it's that's pretty much what it seems to be yeah. useful for the ship for. Um, especially if you come around a hydrogen, a massive hydrogen cloud while on your fleet movements, you just kind of, I guess, pop it on the map and let your star fairies do the work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Harrison, you've asked a question, but I don't think I've actually asked you how this would be useful for you, you know? Oh, um, like, a, like I was saying, long-range missions will be extremely more simple. Like, it, they will get vastly more complicated with the communications and the command systems, but also the 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 range will be the range you gain on the thing will be almost infinite. Let's be honest; it's gonna as long as you you do it correctly and organized and go as far as you can where you know the hydrogen is and you go to places where you suspect there will be hydrogen, then you can you will be able to continually go and all you've got to do is mark down where you've been like essentially breadcrumbs in the trail Hansel and Gretel style and just jump back that way mm. and though it will take a long time to get where you want to go and to go back where you are what naval fleet doesn't take a long time to go halfway across the world it's... the Royal Navy that's not true it still takes a long time. It only takes a week or so. Uh, 
<laughs> Next question. How will this ship affect gameplay in the verse? I guess it's I guess it's kind of the same question, but it's worded differently, I guess. But it could be answered differently. Moose! He's dead. One more time. Um, how would the ship affect gameplay in the verse? Well, kind of like a gas station here on Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can keep going a bit longer. Um, I think it will create good team play aspects along with good contracts and it's going to probably be a very key role, just mm. like Enron. Mm -hmm. So for all those fuel tycoons out there... Yeah, I mean, um, I guess for all those people who are going to be doing mining and that sort of thing, I guess the Starfire Gemini will, will probably be the, the biggest money maker for them, really. Just because of just the the ability to be able to refine fuel while you're in the air, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, so that's going to be a good money maker for them. And I mean, just people who aren't even part of the military who just have starfarers, um, you know, they're going to be able to sell their fuel to military companies, you know, to people who don't have logistic cores and stuff like that, and who may be um, going on big organizations and stuff like that. So. It could be quite an interesting way to see um, how the game is going to be played. Uh, Monty, how do you think this ship is going to affect gameplay in the verse? Uh, give it a Okay, right. there's some tumbleweed there, but. <laughs> yep. Rory, okay. how will this ship change gameplay or affect gameplay in the verse? Oh, we're not talking about self destructing it then. Okay, uh, Hooch, how will this uh, ship affect gameplay in reverse? I think pretty much as we, we, we've we covered, you know, extending range of operations, they're going to be valuable as hell to mm -hmm. put in the field, especially the further you're going, the more you're going to need. Yeah. And you're going to need to keep them a secret, you know, because as soon as anybody you're up against knows that they're there, they're going to go after them because it's a valuable target. Mm. Um, making money, a lot of potential just on based on that. Mm. Mm. Traditionally, you never had support fleets operate with the main fighting force. When no, was, no, they always operate separately and in secret. Yeah. Mm. Assuming you'd have to have a couple of fighters on them at all time, though. Uh, maybe a little escort, yeah. But I mean, the the guns on the Starfarer Gemini. I mean, this, they've got, um, you know three turrets, two of them are, are size 4 and one of them is size 5. There's pretty bloody big turrets. <laughs> well, reasonably big. And then you've got the two size 5 unmanned turrets as well. So that's going to be pretty good. It's going to be able to hold its own, I think. Mm, but you chuck a couple Stoker of retaliators out there. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. Stoker can have one very good capital ship uh, anti-capital ship ability. And um, that's ramming speed. I imagine several large tanks full of hydrogen suddenly igniting might work fairly well as a bomb. Possibly, but then I guess you're just throwing away all of because it's not. It's going to take a while to fully fill this thing up, and I mean, I guess it's it's quite an important ship, so it's not really worth throwing away like that, is it? But oh, um... there's a bigger ship out there. No. Only in incredibly dire situations would you ever use that. Like that would that would have to be that's the zero point zero zero one chance of having to do that. Mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't ever plan for that. I'd say that's a that's like a code four hundred and forty two kind of thing. It's, it, don't ever even consider it unless you are either all dying 
unless you do that. Or you need to give yourself time right. to run or something. Mm. Um, and the final question is, uh, will the ship be profitable to pilot? Moose. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess that pretty much answers that then, doesn't it, really? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, God, blimey. You uh, fly around and money magically appears in your fuel tanks. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh... Okay, so on to the next section of the podcast, which is um, I wanted to do something different this week, and today we're going to do a different section called uh, Life in the Verse, and that is basically where we're going to be talking about, every week we're going to talk about um, where we kind of want the next week to go in terms of how um, Star Citizen is, is going to be doing in development, how we feel... Um, you know, it should be heading and that kind of thing. So, uh, if we start off with, uh, we start off with Hooch. Uh, I'd like to see maybe a hot fix or two mm -hmm. for a few little things. Uh, nothing big, just a couple of clipping issues and a few of the things we noticed when we were playing today. But, um, yeah, I think it's only reasonable for that. Um, you know, uh, that, that's really all I'd expect this week. Mm. Mm. And uh, Monty, what, what do you think will be done this week, or do you want to be done this week? <clears throat> um, Idris. <laughs> so, well, it's a reasonable answer, I guess. Um, uh, Your mind is like a train, my friend. What well, it, it derails and everybody's done. No, 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 no it just no. It's only one track. One track. It is only going in one direction. Yeah. Excuse me, but there are two tracks. Idris. Javelin. <laughs> no, I don't those. Um, and money. Always like more money. Good man, good man. Uh, Oakley. Um, I too would like to see the Idris, but I would like to see the Idris in a really shitty state. Like, really, really nerfed, like, out of its mind. <laughs> Like, a single M50 can easily destroy it. I would love that. Or that's, even, that's my inspiration. Or even an F7C can just blow it up with two shots. Or, or even a Redeemer. Yes. <laughs> a Redeemer <laughs> one-shots. In, in that situation, Idris's. I would be forced to quite literally firebomb the Manchester offices of CIG. Uh, and there we go to the terrorist train. <laughs> well, uh, Monty yep. will now be arrested in the next yes. few days' time. Um, yeah, Moose. How about next week? Where would you like to see the game head? Uh, next patch will be taking us to the probably first-person, I would say, aspect a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, so. Uh, them start to talk so in terms of next week's around the verse would you like them to talk a bit more about kind of what they're planning to do with the fps kind of thing then mm -hmm. yeah that weapons how they're gonna because they've already got you know grenades and personal shields and aid packs mm. so it'd be interesting to see that more implemented or show it up yeah that'd be great that'd be great um and finally before we end the podcast is there any public service announcements people would like to make uh, that kind of thing. Um, money and hose. Money and hose. Other, other than we want to have Admiral Hawk on next week to yes, tell us all we about do. His Yes, actually, that would be great uh, if we can try and get Admiral Hawk. Actually, um, I'm going to do a bit of a selfish plug. Um, I'm going to be appearing uh, this Wednesday on Iron Trazer's podcast. Um, if you'd like to tune in to that, that'd be awesome. Heretic. Heretic, yes. I'm as a guest, though. I'm not I'm not the actual guy leading it. But, yeah, I'm going to be appearing as a guest. And we're also going to try and get our, our, our Iron Traz on, um, who, if you don't know, is actually quite a big uh, figure in terms of the Star Citizen community. He's the head of the Facebook fan page, and he is awesome. He's an awesome and, dude. and if he is watching, I would like to personally apologize. I didn't know who he was. 
until I had already been an ass. Yeah. No, that's okay, Harrison. That's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, it comes with youth. It comes with youth. It does indeed. Um, yeah, if uh, obviously just uh, to do the um, obligatory um, organization plug, and if you would like to join uh, the UENR, um, then I'll be leaving some links in the description down below the YouTube video, but I will also quickly post a link in the Twitch chat. And uh, if you're looking for an organization that is kind of mill sim, but we also like to enjoy ourselves, uh, you know, we like to have a good laugh, we don't take ourselves too seriously, um, then feel free to, to join. You know, we've got plenty of um, squadrons that you can join, um, plenty of things to do, pretty much any job that you would like to do, you can do it. Um, and while I quickly get this... blowing up pirates and wandering scum. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, while I get this link, would someone like to chat shit for a couple of seconds? Oh, I shotgun. Okay. Harrison is we... a really awful member, isn't he? Yes, I vote that awful member. Got every single airlock on the Ark Royal. Harrison's exit. <laughs> the end of my rant. I am. I am. I am going to enter the toilet of your Ark Royal, and I am going to not even bother looking at the toilet. The mirror is going to be my You're best. not going, going to have permission to get in. That's fine. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I would just like to say that um, currently the policy on drugs in the UNEENR thingy... You, you completely under, butchered that. Yeah. You is, completely is butchered that. Serious, serious conversation whether or not they will be allowed or not. Combat drugs. Yes, I saw a post about this. Go on. Um, no, please go ahead. What was this post about? Um, basically, somebody asked, "Can we use combat drugs in the UENR?" And everybody's going, um, um, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> awesome. Everyone's kind of going, "Well, it might be frowned upon, but drugs are okay." That's yeah. what... Drugs yeah. are bad, okay? <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs> I would imagine. I would imagine our policy will probably end up sitting on wherever the navy actually sits on policy with that. Yeah, no, we would probably that. adopt the same policy. It's going to be high then. That's not going to be good, is it? <clears throat> the interesting thing is the navy's policy will probably be: we are allowed to take performance-enhancing drugs, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so, uh, seeing as the ship of the week was the Starfarer Gemini, I think we've asked everyone so far who, what, who they, ugh, what ship they wanted to be the ship of the week. I'm going to be selfish this week, and I'm going to choose it. I'm going to be really selfish, because I'm a bastard like that. Uh, we need to do, cause we, because we did a military version this week, um, it's now up to the transport version, so... What have we done in terms of transport? We've done the Carrack. We've done the M50. We've done the 890. So let's do... This is a really difficult decision. You're regretting being selfish now, aren't you? Uh, uh, uh. Safe me not, sir. I mean, there are dozens of the fucking things. Mmm... Mm. You say transport ship and everybody goes, Oh, it's like a tiny little firefly. Fuck off. Uh, he's going to agree with me at this point, and he's going to feel really annoyed for doing so. No, no, I'm, I would, well, I'm not going to agree with you. In fact, I'm just going to go on the Robert Space Industry. Car to all. Call yourself a fan. Yeah, car to all. You should know all of the ships. That's military. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's a science. All right. What about the Reliant then? Yeah. Reliant. Mm. No, I changed my mind. Endeavor. We're doing Endeavor. Oh, that's a next good. week. That's quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. 
Legend, you see. Oh, oh, if you two want to own an Endeavour, Monty's new starships has them for set. Well, this is what you should have done during the oh, PSA. Yeah, and you should have done this with the music instead of just jumping in like yeah, this. Look, look, right, and right. It's just really just kind of, you could have done this right. Oh, right, I'm going to put some music on and then you're going to have to do Monty's starship thing. Oh, this is This is ridiculous. You should have done this ages ago, dude. <sighs> right. Fucking unreliable as usual. <laughs> right. Go on. <laughs> Fucking internet. Sorry, give it a second. Who's doing the music? Monty. Monty, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just having to give a, a YouTube a second to spoil up. Uh, here we go. You too can own a sensual endeavor from Monty's used starships. We have a variety of add on pods so you can peruse and purchase <laughs> at your speed. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay, everyone, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, tune in next week um, when we'll have a uh, an even better show with tons and tons and tons. Of yeah, we're just not music. gonna we're not we're not gonna phone it in next week. We'll actually do something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, everyone. Uh, speak to you soon. Ciao. See you next week. Bye. Bye.